Hey everybody, I was recently somebody recently requested how to um, manipulate your aspect ratio to look like a 2.35 or 2.39 uh, aspect ratio, which is basically like the cinema uh, aspect ratio. Uh, I want to quickly describe aspect ratio and explain what that is. Basically, what aspect ratio is is uh, let me open up a clip here is it's basically explained as however many pixels you have going across your image uh, compared to how many pixels you have going up and down your image here. So in this instance here, a 1920 by 1080 uh, means you have uh, 1920 pixels going across long ways and 1080, 1080 pixels up and down. That's basically the resolution. Now the aspect ratio is how many pixels you have going across to how many you're going up and down. And a uh, quick way of figuring that out um, is by simplifying this here. The, the 1920 by 1080, you can simplify those things and figure that out. This uh, basically comes out, let me open a calculator here. Simplify the number that can go into both of these is 120 to get this down to the lowest number. So we're going to go to, oops, we're going to do 1920 divided by 120, simplifies it down to 16. So 1080 divided by same number, 120, is, it goes down to 9. So this basically simplifies down. As every, for every 16 pixel, pixels you have, you have 9 pixels. Uh, for every 16 pixels you have across, you have 9 pixels up and down. That's the uh, most simplified you can go into whole numbers. Um, actually, this can be simplified more. And a quick way of doing that is taking it down to the ratio of, of however many pixels this is to 1. Uh, so it's uh, for for every one pixel you have vertically, you're going to have that many pixels. You're going to have so many pixels uh, horizontally. The way you figure that out is going 1920 divided by 1080, and that ends up giving you a 1.77 to 1 aspect ratio. So for every 1.77 pixels across, you have one pixel up and down. But this is commonly known to uh, known as um, 16 by 9 or 1.78 if you round up there, 1.78 aspect ratio. Um, as you start getting into wider aspect ratios, you start getting more pixels going across here, and you'll get an image that goes wider across uh, and with, with either the same amount of pixels going up or down or, or less pixels going up and down. Uh, let's bring up a, over a chart here and kind of describe uh, that aspect ratio here. We've got a few different things we're going to be showing. But, um, Starting on with standard definition video, that ends up being a 4 by 3 or simplified down to a, to a 1 um, is 1.33 to 1. Uh, and that is like this kind of square here. As you go to uh, European aspect ratio, you get like 1.6 to 1. That's a little wider. Uh, that is their theatrical um, aspect ratio. Uh, but now, a standard H high definition video, not standard um, definition, but standard high definition video is 16 by 9 or 1.78 to 1. Now, cinema, as you go into U.S. Uh, theaters, you're going to start seeing a little bit wider. You can see how much wider these get as you move down here. And notice how this is wider. This is going to be simplified to a 1.85 to 1 aspect ratio. That's where um, that's where a lot of the movie screenings take place is 1.85 to 1, but then as you get the more, I guess, like the bigger movies that are like Batman and these big kind of uh, beautiful scenic scenic films, you'll get a 2.39 to 1 uh, aspect ratio. This is considered a widescreen for theaters, but there's a very, very widescreen here. And as you get into bigger ones, you'll get 2.71 and uh, some very rare types of, uh, of uh, aspect ratios for big where screens have to be built specifically for uh, these screenings here. But anyway, but the standard ones, like I said, are high definition. Oops. Yes, high definition. Um, this is where theater screenings start, and this is kind of where they end until you get to IMAX and some other things there, though. But the, these here are kind of the three standards for high definition these days. So if you've shot things on, if you've got a camera like a DSLR camera that shoots video, you're only going to be getting... Uh, a 16 by 9 video uh, with most of those cameras. It depends on if you have some of the newer cameras are starting to shoot 4K and a little bit different aspect ratio. Some of them will shoot like not a true 4K, but a 4K that's like just under 4,000 pixels to achieve the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Uh, but anyway, if you're shooting on DSLR and you want, uh, let's see, I've got some red footage here as well. As we click on this, 
This here is a true 4K. It's 4096 by 2160. Let's figure out what that aspect ratio is. 4096 divided by 2160 equals 1.89. So this was shot in uh, a cinema uh, aspect ratio here. 1.89 and it is a little bit wider than 16 by 9. Let's watch what happens when we pull one of these. Let's pull the red footage into a sequence here. The, um, the 1.85 aspect ratio into a timeline here. Now I'm going to grab our DSLR footage and I'm going to grab some DSLR footage. This is a lower res and also a different aspect ratio. But uh, let's take a look at this. And right now I've got it, uh, I've got under my preference settings before I imported, under my general preferences here, I've got default scale to frame size, which any, means any footage I import in, it's going to have that check marked on that footage as it imports it into my project. And then if you put it into a timeline that has a different resolution, it will automatically scale it to that to meet that resolution. So this is 16, or this is uh, 1920 by 1080 blown up to 4K here. But look what we've got. Look over here. You've got this and this. These here are called letterboxes. Uh, sometimes you'll see letterboxes on top if your aspect ratio is wider, like oftentimes CinemaScope being put in a 16 by 9, you'll see letterboxes on top or on bottom. Let's demonstrate that really quick. I'm going to grab my DSLR footage and create a new sequence. And now this one is a 16 by 9 sequence, so I'm going to grab my red footage now, which is a wider aspect ratio, drag it into this timeline, and boom, there are our there are our letterboxes on top and bottom. So when we're sitting, fitting something wider in a 16 by 9, you're going to get these uh, letterbox. You're going to get the letterbox on top and bottom. When you do it to six, 16 by 9 into a 1.89 aspect ratio, or let's call this 1.78 into a into a 1.85 uh, aspect ratio, you're going to get the letterboxes on the sides. So, because this is not quite as wide, so you can see that these two videos are two different um, aspect ratios. So, you, what you want to decide is what you're going to be, um, what you're going to be editing in. Do you want to screen in 16 by 9, or do you want to screen in uh, something wider, like 1.89, or sorry, 1.85, or 2.39? What aspect ratio do you want to screen in? So, let's say we want to screen in. Um, Let's say we want to go really wide. We're going to shoot in 2.39. I'm going to start a new sequence here. So we're going to create a new sequence here. I'm going to go into the sequence settings. I'm going to go down to uh, red. The red um, set presets here, even if you're not using red, still has some pretty good uh, presets that you can use that will work with any um, with any codec really. Because uh, these are not codec uh, specific here. These are just more resolution and setups. As, uh, Premiere actually does a real-time encoding from whatever footage you're using to uh, MPEG-2 preview is what it's called. Uh, but under their 5 set, 5K settings, they do have some some true uh, th what are considered um, 2.35 to 2.39 uh, to 1. They could, they're called 2.4, but they're they're essentially 2.3 3.9 to 1 uh, aspect ratios here. So I'm going to create a new sequence here. Uh, I'm going to go down and name this one. I'm going to call this my like final sequence. Now what I would recommend doing first of all, see some people say um, actually just export out your movie and crop the top and bottom in, in the export, but that doesn't work because it starts cutting off heads. I'm going to show you a better way of doing this to work with this to get it to go into this wide aspect ratio. There we go. There's our wide aspect ratio. But what I would recommend first doing is uh, finding your timeline that you're going to be editing in. Uh, right now, I'm just going to edit in 16 by 9. It'll process quicker. My video will, will edit quicker. So I'm just going to do a standard 16 by 9 to start with and just ignore the letterboxes. So I'm going to just quickly edit some stuff here in my 16 by 9, and uh, then I'll come back and, and, and go from there. But yeah, that's your first step is to just get your movie edited. And then once it's done, then you, that's going to be the, the finalizing part is going to be uh, conforming everything to your new 2 by 3 5 sequence. Two, sorry, I keep saying 2.35 is 2.39. So uh, I'm going to do a quick edit, come back, and show you. Okay, I've done some edit here. I've mixed some footage. These projects have nothing to do with each other, but I just put them. One is 16 by 9, and uh, one is um, 1 1.85. So, uh, so I've got here some DSLR footage mixed with red footage, back to DSLR and back to red. And you notice that since it's a 16 by 9 sequence, I've got this little, uh, I've got letterboxes on the red footage. So now what I'm going to do is take all my footage from the sequence. I'm going to do Command A, select it, copy it, go to my final sequence, which is in my 2.35, and paste it in here. 
So now we're going to go through this and you'll notice, look at the huge letter boxes on the side here. Because uh, now this is getting really wide and I go here and even the red footage has these letter boxes, not quite as much. But now this is a 2.35 to 1. So now what we've got to do is you're going to have to zoom up on this. Uh, so now this is a 5K sequence. And by the way, if you don't want a 5K sequence, you can create a custom sequence that is about half the size. Because 5K is going to take quite a bit to process and you're really upscaling this footage. It just depends on, um, on what you're doing. But since I shot some footage in 4K, that might not be a bad way to go. It just really depends on what you're trying to do. So what I'm actually going to do here uh, is I'm going to make a different final sequence. This is so you just have to kind of choose if you want all that rendering to go into it, so you don't get so you get lossless compression or lossless uh, resolution. But I'm going to do a new sequence again. I'm going to go down to this uh, 2.39 aspect ratio, and I'm going to actually go up to settings here, and I'm going to change this. I'm going to make this like half the resolution. You'll have to do the mathematics and figure out where you want what sort of resolution you want to work with. So I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to cut this in half. We're going to go 5120 divided by 2, goes 2560, or 2560, and then I'm going to divide my, 21, my next one in half here, divided by 2, equals 1080. So there we go. So this is 2560, so this is kind of like a 2K a video clip, which is going to be great. It's going to be great quality. It would work in a, in a movie theater or anything you want to show it in because it's still pretty high resolution. So I'm going to make that have the resolution of the 5K, and I do have this. I do have the 1.39 to, to 1 aspect ratio. Hit OK. And there we go. There's my aspect ratio, but with less resolution, so there will be less like um, processing going on. I'm going to paste my footage in here, and now your last step is going to be going through each clip and adjusting each clip here. I'm going to go to my effect controls and I'm going to go to my motion here and I'm going to increase the scale. This is kind of a pain but this is kind of, this is the honestly the best and true way to do it to make the video actually be the true size here. And I'm going to zoom that up. Now if your headroom is blocking, say I want to see the top of the clip here, you can actually, let, let me do this. First of all I'm going to copy this one here. I'm going to hit Command C on this clip. I'm going to go to all my DSLR footage, which is just one clip. But say you have several clips, you can select them all, right click on it. If, if they're all DSLR you're set, you can, you can actually select everything right click on it and you can paste attributes from your first clip and it will paste the attributes um, from the first clip to the, this one, to these ones. Um, so I'm just going, going to right click on this one, say paste attributes and it does, it asks you what you want to attach. I'm just going to do just motion here. Uh, so it attaches the motion there and it zooms up on it. Now let's say, uh, let's fix these ones as well. So I'm going to go to my scale, this is my red footage, I'm going to scale up and you will have to do this to every every clip unless you just want heads cut off and uh, then you can just apply this all the way across but it's going to cut some heads off at some point because it wasn't shot this way so I'm going to copy that I'm going to go here and paste it on my paste the attributes on my other red footage let me move the playhead over so you can see that happen here paste attributes yes paste the, mo the motion there we go see here it is cutting off heads so now once you've got everything zoomed up now you can go to the beginning and click on a clip and say where do I want my vertical position this is actually what colorists do when they figure out what the final resolution is going to be they do the final uh, scaling and positioning uh, that is part of, of what the, the, the colorist job actually so when they're coloring they will also do the final positioning of each frame according to the director so I'm going to grab my vertical information here and move it up and down until I get it exactly where I want to without creating the letterbox Right there. Now you can see more of that clip. I like that. Move on to the next shot. This one seems to be framed nicely, so moving on. Here, uh, this seems good, but let's say we want a little bit more headroom here. So I'm going to just move that down so we see a little bit more of the space above the girl there. Move to the next one. This is obviously cutting off heads. And I'm going to select that and move it down. There we go. And I've got... Thank you. I know my mouse batteries are low. There we go. So now I got everything exactly where I wanted to. It fits in the 16 or into the 2.35 aspect ratio. Now I'm going to export my video. I'm going to do Command M. Well, you can of course do color correction and other things, but when this exports out, you can just tell it to keep the same aspect ratio, and it, it will be in that true 
aspect ratio without the letterboxes. Oftentimes what people do is they'll just add a letterbox template on their timeline, and that's kind of the cheapo way of doing it. This is like the real way of doing it, unless you're doing it. I should say, actually, the real way of doing it is doing it in a coloring program like SpeedGrade or DaVinci. Uh, but this works just fine here. So I'm going to actually just match my settings here. Everything looks pretty good. I'm just going to do a quick export just to show you guys what this looks like here. So I increase my data rate here. I'm going to go up to 50 megabits per second. Do a constant bit rate. I do have another tutorial on compression here. You guys can look at that later if you wish. But I'm going to save that to my desktop and say we'll call this one eight. Oops, two three five aspect. Two three nine. Sorry. Two three nine. Sorry. Call this two three nine aspect. Save. Export. I'll come back and show you that in a second. Okay, video has been exported out. Here is my video right here. If we open this up, let me open this up in quick time here. You'll notice it has no letter boxes on it. The video signal starts with the video and ends with uh, begins with the picture, ends with the picture. It doesn't have those stinking letter boxes on it. And uh, let's play through this a little bit, and you'll kind of see how the video plays there. And it uh, looks good, very cinematic. Uh, no color correction on this yet, but. Uh, but you get the point. And everything's in the same aspect ratio. Looks like it was shot that way. Looks like it was, uh, and looks like it could be showing in a movie theater. DSLR footage and uh, red footage. But, so there you go. So if you have any questions, uh, be sure to message me. But that is kind of how you ch achieve a 2.39 aspect ratio. And, um, one other recommendation I would make is uh, unless you're shooting it on a really high resolution and it's been intended for a movie th a movie screen, I probably wouldn't recommend doing 2.39. It's very wide and kind of uh, obnoxious to watch on a regular uh, laptop or a computer or a YouTube. Uh, I would say, and, and YouTube is just going to add the letterboxes for you to fit it into a 16 by 9 space anyway. Um, so what I would recommend doing is probably like a 2. Point, uh, or sorry, a 1.85 or 1.89 or 1.85 aspect ratio uh, that gives you a little bit more cinematic look that's a kind of a theatrical cin cinematic look and it's not s really incredibly wide so it just depends on what you're doing what you're trying to achieve uh, but 1.85 is kind of a nice uh, aspect ratio to use as well for that kind of cinema look so if you have any questions let me know